Brothers, sister, penguins in the dream to explore They swim from the South Pole looking for more Now they zip across America to check out the scenes And they want to see you travel to the summer to see The ultimate penguin adventure screen In Washington, D.C. The National Air and Space Museum Welcome to Washington, D.C. Travelers. Opened on the National Mall in 1976, the year of the U.S. Bicentennial. It's the most visited museum in the United States, and you'll love the free admission. Today, we explore the National Air and Space Museum with our parachuting twin penguins, Cha-Cha and Z. What? Thanks, Captain Polly Bear. I love skydiving, and I've waited so long to come to the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. What? Where birds like us can learn about flight and the science behind it? Don't worry, Z. I'll show you. Let's go. Because... Aren't we birds? Flying is natural for us, right? Again, our wings are for swimming. Z, why would we buy plane tickets in the first place? Frequent flyer miles? Mm. No, wait. Can you even imagine what would have happened had we not used those parachutes? Cha-cha. Yes? I am so hungry for pancakes right now. <laughs> Z! I don't know, but here comes Polly. Hold on to your pancakes, penguins. You're about to witness the OG of aeronautic awesomeness, the world-famous 1903 Wright Flyer. No, that's the wrong flyer. But this is the 1903 Wright Flyer. Invented by the brothers Wilbur and Oval Wright after years of development, their first flight was on December 17, 1903 in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. On that cold, windy winter day, the brothers warmed themselves next to the fire with hot cocoa. Mmm, yeah, cocoa Yum. and sardines on the beach. Uh, no, just cocoa. Anyway, and they found time to take four flights in their airplane. Orville first for 12 seconds and 120 feet, then Wilbur for 175 feet, then Orville again for 200 feet, and finally, Wilbur for 59 seconds and 852 feet. Uh, hold up, everybody. If the longest flight was not even a minute and only 260 meters, just over two football fields, then why was this so important? I mean, Polly's plane went way farther than that. Great question, Z. This was the first sustained, controlled, powered, heavier-than-air manned flight. Whoa! So this was the first time humans flew! Well, actually, Z, the Wright brothers flew in 1903. But way back around the year 500 BC, people were flying kites in China. Fast forward to the 1700s in Europe, and people were flying manned hot air balloons. And gliders in the 1800s in both Europe and the United States. Ah, oh, I got it. So all of that led us up to this, the world's first successful airplane flight. Yeah, that's the ticket! <laughs> Hey, can you smell that? Is it pancakes? No, I think I smell invention. Cha Cha and Z travel tip number five. Exploring outside is so much fun, especially in the sun. So make sure you wear a hat. It helps protect your face, neck, and ears when you're out all day. And most places have colorful hats you can collect. It's a great way to remember your favorite destinations and to be a cool-headed traveler. In Washington, D.C., the National Air and Space Museum. Welcome back, fearless flying friends. Ready for travel surprise, les doux? <clears throat> Cha-cha, I think it's time for our friends to see this plane. Right you are, announcer guy. Holly Bear 1, reveal time. Oh, oh oops, Chakarooski, Cha-Cha. I got this. Oh, oh, oh. Well, polar bears certainly can't fly. Polly, are you okay? Yep. Can you see the surprise now? Yes, we can. And what a wonderful surprise it is. It's the spirit of St. Louis. In 1919, a $25,000 prize was offered for the first non-stop flight between New York City and Paris. 
On May 20th, 1927, Charles Lindbergh took off in his cutting-edge plane. That's less than 24 years after the Wright brothers' first flight. Remember them? In 33 and a half hours, Lindbergh flew 3,500 miles across the Atlantic. Except for the help of a few seagulls and porpoises, he was totally alone. And he was only 25 years old. He was young like we are. Just think of the things we all do. Can you smell it this time, Cha-Cha? No. That's the smell of adventure. So what are these flags on the side of the plane? Oh, I know this. After flying across the Atlantic, Mr. Lindbergh went on a goodwill tour. He got a flag painted onto the sides of his plane for each country he visited. Washington to Mexico City, through Central America, Colombia, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, and nonstop from Cuba to St. Louis. Woo! The smell of adventure is really getting strong in here. Then Mr. Lindbergh took the spirit of St. Louis on its final flight from St. Louis to Washington, D.C and gave it to the Smithsonian Institution, where we are now. Wow. Hey, Cha-Cha. Yeah? Told you penguins could fly. <laughs> Hello, kids. Join Cha-Cha and Z and their new friends as they explore the San Antonio Riverwalk. Could I come too? We'll learn about its rich culture, music, and delicious food. There's so much for kids to see and do. Cha-Cha and Z in San Antonio. National Air and Space Museum. Welcome back, explorers. Here's what we know so far. Polar bears need big parachutes, and penguins need plane tickets to fly, and you travelers need to know what the next travel surprise is. On October 14, 1947, this airplane became the first to fly faster than the speed of sound. It's the Bell X-1. Go try that at home, kids. <laughs> Well done, Polly, and well done, United States Air Force Captain Chuck Yeager for flying the Bell X-1 faster than the speed of sound. And nice touch for naming your plane Glamorous Glennis after your wife. Ew, yuck. Can we get back to the plane, guys? So, Cha-Cha, how did the Bell X-1 fly faster than sound itself? Sound has speed? Affirmative, Z. Fasten your seatbelt. Because we're going to go fast. Here, you see a normal plane flying slower than the speed of sound. That dot on the right is you. Why I gotta be a little duck? As this plane gets closer, you will always hear it before it passes overhead. Because the sound is moving faster than the plane. So sound is a thing that moves. And it moves fast, Z. But not faster than Jaeger took the Bell X-1 that special day. Check it out! Oh look, there's the normal plane from before. It looks pretty fast. Yes, but it's still traveling slower than sound. But where's Chuck Yeager in the Bell X-1? Five, there he is now. Four, you might three, want to cover your ears, two, Z. One. I don't hear anything. Whoa. Whoa! That was crazy fast. Yeah, the X-1 went so fast that the sound came after. It couldn't even keep up. It was like the normal plane was... And you just heard the sound when you saw the plane. But man, with the Bell X-1... It was long gone before you heard it. Cover your ears! Whoa! <laughs> and that's what it sounds like to break the sound barrier. That is so rad. Wait a minute. We're going to have to break the sound barrier if we want to see the rest of this museum. You know what that means. Yeah! Freestyle Explore! Explore. Anyone want to learn to be a pilot? You can be the pilot of your own plane. And it's a plane made for one. Sorry, Z. Space travel, anyone? Space travel, everyone. The Mercury Friendship 7 and Gemini 4 were some of the early crafts used to take Americans and penguins into space. Ready to land on the moon? Houston Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong, <laughs> Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins were the first people to land and walk on the moon. Wow, less than 66 years after the Wright brothers took their first flight. Amazing! That's one small step for Penguin. One giant leap for Penguin kind. Anyone want to learn the science of flight? Let me explain. Air has to flow over the wing faster than it flows under the wing. Then you get lift under the wings. And that's how stuff flies. Hey, buddy. Hi. Where have you been? You okay? How was your surgery? So I'm glad you're okay. Z, that was... Flytastic? No, just plain perfect. So, 
You think all our friends will want to come visit? Of course! Everyone loves flying because flying is fun and it takes you to really cool places. And as we always say, you should come explore for yourself. Oh, and here's one bonus surprise for you, Cha-Cha. Ch-ch-check -ch it out! Hey, how are you doing that? You just taught me. Faster air above the wings gives you lift. You should try it. I guess some penguins can fly. <laughs> That's right. As long as they're cartoon traveling kid penguins. But it's a lot less work when you fly a plane.